What's up, everyone? We're back with day two of our first qualifier. We saw four matches or best of ones played yesterday, and we're continuing that same trend. Four best of ones will be played today. If you need a quick refresher, it was Swiss format, and we'll be starting with a pretty good game. But I'm Crow, and I'm joined by Galumalu. How are you, man? I'm doing very well. I've had a nice day, recovered from yesterday's sleep. That's fantastic. Now, again, you know, you're over in, you know, Britain. Yeah. That is true. But uh, we got two teams here. They're called Lycus Empire and LSR. So these are only two of three teams who are still undefeated through our first four rounds. The other one being uh, Able Esports. I don't actually remember who's on that team. I think it's a friend. I think that's Storm's team. I think that's the Frenchie team. But these are the other two. And they're going to be playing against each other. So we thought, you know, this is the best match. Theoretically, the best match we'll have seen so far. And like as Empire, we saw them before. It's Aggro, Candle R6, Cryptics, Ozone, and Woos. Ozone and Woos who have played in Challenger League. LSR, on the on the other hand, Bino, Twiz. Uh, his full name's Twizzler. I don't know if he's still going by Twizzler. Bino, Twizzler, Bry, Riot, and the one and only JJ Blastful, who may just qualify for a league. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I have no clue really of either of these teams. So it'd be fun to fun to see them mm -hmm. kind of play. Didn't catch either of them yesterday. So I don't know, I'm kind of looking forward to this. Coming a bit blind, but sometimes that's a nice way to go about things. Yeah, and uh, speaking of going in blind, we'll be able to find out what map we're going to. Chalet and Cafe off the table instantly. JJ typically likes the more, uh, the slower, more strategically in-depth map. So Chalet and Skyscraper off the board first really makes sense. And you don't want to take JJ to something like a cafe or a club. Border and Villa still keeping with the exact same trend like his Empire. Don't want to take JJ to a strategic map. JJ wants to stay away from the looser, more aggressive, smaller ones. So we got three maps left, and unfortunately, it's neither of the interesting ones. Bank and Theme Park are next off the board, and we end up on Oregon. On good old, good old Oregon. Um, I mean, I would consider this a JJ map, but Oregon should be an everyone map. Like, you should you should know how to play this map. Um, I know JJ like likes it, but... It's still weird considering that LSR and JJ have been around for so long. I wouldn't say they've been at the top of T3, but they've been up there. Um, and Lycus Empire are kind of... I mean, they've been together for a bit, but they're kind of new-ish to this level of play. Uh, and I'm con I'm concerned with LSR kind of bringing us to the Equalizer map. Yeah, I mean, there was the old saying. I mean, this was this was an old Oregon where it was the map where like, good teams would go to die. Yep. And I think that's still very much the case, right? Because... Like, I mean, you said it. Everyone knows this map. Everyone understands Oregon very well at a fundamental level. And for that reason, sometimes you might be the better team on paper, but it doesn't always go your way because your opponent kind of just knows a little bit more comfortably what you might be trying if you go with something that's even a little bit quirky, easier to read into. Exactly. So uh, something you don't know as well about JJ, I don't know if you were informed, but um, there is a, a running gag uh, that JJ, uh, the JJ Qual curse. He has n a very, very, very low success rate when it comes to qualifiers. He didn't qualify for Challenger League, although he came very close. SCS last season wasn't able to qualify, although he came very close. The season before, the only reason he got in was kind of like a, a roster loophole. So even though his teams are not bad, he never qualifies. So like his empire will... Uh, ban Flores and Alibi. Flores, a staple ban on this map, a staple operator on the map in general, and they want to make sure that LSR aren't allowed to play with that Alibi. That's a direct target ban. Nook and Azami, though, banned universally, so that makes perfect sense as well. Yeah, I mean, especially Azami on this map, right, there are lots of positions where you'd want to put those deployable shields, and having those keepers, you throw them out, they add to that sort of extra layer of defense where you can bunker down behind, and with something like the Flores off the table, it becomes a lot harder to have the explosive utility available to deal with them. Banning them just makes a little bit too much sense here, and well, Kid Storms, it's going to be the first bomb site gone to, the, the common bomb site to go to, first of all, but it'll be interesting to see how they're going to set this one up. The Valkyrie giving them a little bit more information so that they can kind of get a grasp of what might be going on or maybe hide some in sight if they end up losing that control to play from beneath, but so far looking like a fairly standard setup from them. 
By the way, shout out to uh, shout out to Cryptix for the baseball reference earlier, saying uh, it is true. Alejandro Kirk, I think, is the first Blue Jays catcher to win a Silver Slugger award in baseball history. So that's cool. Aaron Judge won his like third or something like that. But I guess Cryptix is a Blue Jays fan. I'm sure his heart was broken when they threw the uh, what did they throw an eight to one lead, something like that, to the Mariners in the postseason. They ended up losing nine eight. That was not great. I'm sure Cryptic's cried many tears. Hopefully he won't have to cry any tears today, though. Going up is JJ. The curse has to strike at some point. And this is this would be the perfect opportunity with two undefeated teams going at it. JJ's team will start on the defense. LSR opting for dorms, first and foremost, with a downstairs hold inside kitchen. Very common strategy, although there's less C4 presence than I think I would have expected with this hold coming out. Yeah, I mean, being able to play with so much of this site floor being soft, there's only really the one spot in the trophy doorway that you can kind of get away with. But you know what? They'll have to see if they can put what they do have to good use as Lycus taking early control over Armory, just trying to force back anyone inside of trophy. Not that there's anyone there right now. LSR choosing to play just a little bit tight to the site with that downstairs hold. You don't want to spread yourselves too thinly, but it's already going to be getting underway on Attic as they're trying to Maverick Trick open this wall, give themselves these long lines of sight they can draw down towards Pit. Although for the time being, no one's really challenging it. None of the defense really want to overextend themselves or push forwards. You'd often see teams try to hold this space. Wow. Instead, just playing a little bit more reserved. The impact trick to get rid of the first exothermic charge, though, and he still has one more in pocket. Is the Thermite just going to go for the second one? He should just be able to repeat. Oh, no, he hits the mm. Iron Bar instead. They do get the Breach. That's uh, what's very difficult about that impact trick and one of the reasons why people don't really do it too much anymore. It's easy to read. I'm surprised uh, Lycus didn't read into it. But, mm. I mean, Riot, of a valiant attempt, he at least took out one, but unfortunately one is really all the Thermite needs to get open that wall. You got aggro on the Maverick, an operator who we don't see all too often since he lost his nades, pushing in from the attic side as well. But bring the Maverick and the IQ to try and counter the Valkyrie that Bry has means you've only got one set of nades, and now you have even less explosive destruction with the Zofia going down to Riot. Luckily, Ozone's there for the trade, but still... The nades from Cryptix and the burn from the rest of his team is going to have to be on point if he wants to get rid of the shield that JJ was previously playing behind, but decided to push out from. He'll die in the middle of the bomb site. Twizzler at least gets a trade onto aggro, so we're three versus three. It's the Malusi downstairs, not the Valkyrie. The C4 has already been used, though, and it did not find any effect. The nade does come through, dusts the shield, and Bry can't land the shot. Cryptix threads the needle, and Twizzler's got to come back to site to help out Bino. He's trying to cover Pit. He's got the advantageous angle against, I believe that's Woos on the IQ, and he does get the kill back to even, but his Cryptix finishes off the low HP Twizzler and gets that 3k. Now Bino's got a clutch. Nade comes in, but Cryptix gets caught with it in his hand, and Bino pre-fires Ozone. Elisar off the back of their Jaeger, counter Cryptix 3k with a 3k of their own, and land round number one. I mean, when you have that advantage, right, they're able to get through, able to get rid of the shield, and I mean, Valkyrie, right, playing right back on on Hobo, right? You'd think he'd be able to change his angle a little bit better. Ultimately, it's Cryptix that lands the shots, and I mean, with the pre-fire coming in, it was a really nice swing just to take him out. That space opened up. You would, you would have thought that knowing he's inside of Dorms, they can play this three versus two advantage. They can start to just put a little bit more pressure, especially when Twizzler falls as well. The Jaeger isolated in the back corner, but ultimately, it was just a case of they pushed in disarray. They didn't push together, and that gave the opportunities for these continuous one versus one gunfights for Bino. Uh, and he just won them all. I mean, you just got to be a bit more careful with that pit drop because that's ultimately where it started to fall apart. You then go into that plant, trying as that time starts to tick away. Just a little bit more coordination and like us take that round pretty comfortably. Now, did you call it hobo? Yeah. It's hobo. It's like the, the corner by the bunks, right? Is like, that like, uh, a... like, like by the window? By big window? Like the corner all the way in the back? Yeah. Oh. I, I think so at least. That's 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 what I've always called it. I mean, yeah. maybe it's like a, a regional thing. I don't know. It could be. Yeah, I've never I've never heard it called obo. Usually we just call that metal because of the because the metal bunk. Because that, there's that makes metal because there's metal and and then chassis for each of the corners. But uh, interesting. Why is it called hobo? 
I'll be completely honest with you. I have no clue. All right, fair enough. A, a lot of these just like someone just said it one time, and I was just like, you know what? I know, I know. Like I there have are no teams, better things uh, to, to call it. I know there are teams that call like the uh, leftmost cocktail bar on cafe. They call it rooster. I don't know where the hell that comes from. So. Yeah, calls in Siege are a bit weird. They are. Like, uh, yeah. I know there's like four different calls for between black car and white van on a uh, on garage on console, but. We're not, yep. we're not gonna go <laughs> We're not gonna go there. We're not gonna go there. <laughs> in the meantime, Lycus Empire have worked their way into the map. LSR have permitted them to walk in for free. This is a full downstairs hold and why not? Jaeger, Aruni, Smoke, Mira. You've got all the pieces you need for a pretty damn good turtle hold. Additionally, an extra shield being brought by Bry, who's playing on the Warden. Not a whole lot of flashbangs he's gonna be able to see through, but still it's a shield and a 1.5 in the MPX. Well, I mean, that, at the end of the day, sometimes that's just enough, right? You have a good gun with a yep. good sight. It's a headshot machine. Get them headshots. And I think that's kind of the goal here. You also get that shield. You get to play around it. And it looks like that's currently causing some trouble for Lycus. They can't quite remove him from Pillar. And the Havana upstairs trying to get open these hatches, specifically E-Box hatch, right? You can then start to apply that pressure. Use some of the utility, maybe flashbangs or nades, if you're able to rotate them up. Just to try and dislodge the Warden from this position makes it a lot easier to get that access into Bunker and down the staircase. But Cryptics, well, he's trying to pry away at this freezer hold. Gets the deployable shield. But Brian is in a position where if he needs to, he can move in to support the mirror. They're just kind of waiting to see if this opening pick can fall in either team's favor. Candle's still just trying to apply the pressure required, but taking the worst brunt of it. I expect we'll see the Warden get played a lot as well with Alibi being banned. I believe Warden is the only other operator with a shield and a 1.5. With the players in Pillar now separating, trying to work a crossfire against the Zofia and Candle R6 gets smoked by Bry looking for another, but Wooz has the trade. Four versus four as the gas canisters continue to keep this player at bay. Cryptic's the next to fall to Bino. JJ swings close with the shotgun, but Aggro just tanks it. He does not care about the buckshot. Bino's at least there for the trade, though he eats a lot of damage and pays a price. Ozone walking down the oh, stairs, no. unaware of Riot. This could be a freebie as the Hibana lands one. There's the instant trade. The case is forfeited, and Riot lands the second. LSR with round number two, and they lead 2-0. Sometimes you just gotta hide in the corner and collect the freebies when they walk past, and that's all. That's all you. That's all he did. He just waited patiently. Didn't make. Didn't move a muscle. Recognized that the time playing against them. It's likely that Habana, who has the case, they know they're playing a meeting. The easiest way to come down safely is that staircase. And I mean, it was a really nice hold from LSR generally, just waiting out this clock a lot. Like his empire probably could have made a little bit of a better move to clear more space for themselves. Right, Cryptic had that pressure point in freezer, but looking down the mirror window makes it a little bit harder to actually push in and take that space. And ultimately, just being able to play kind of passively, LSR just forcing that time to tick down. Like us forced to go into these uncomfortable positions and losing gunfights as a result of it. Hopefully, we'll see like his empire maybe bomb located by attacker. A little more thorough with their info game especially leading into the last stages of that execute lsr bringing out another turtle ish style of defense bringing the cade now and echo to combo with the smoke wanted to delay as much time as possible on that upstairs hold hopefully they're they're banking again that like his empire just take a long time to do anything that's where Bino's going to come into play. And there's a lot of spots for the Echoes to sit on this site. He could drop down to the basement. He could even retake upstairs if, like, his umpire aren't pushing it. He could go over towards dining. But, of course, that's being removed right or as an option right now by, like, his umpire since this is the main point where they're beginning their clear from here and upstairs. So, hopefully, they'll be quick about it. They're up against Brian Riot, a Valkyrie, and a Smoke. I think I think the Jaeger's up there, too. They've rotated him up. So a lot of stock being placed in this upstairs to waste time and make that Echo formidable. Yeah, and again, it, it is just playing this time as much as they can do. Having this upstairs hold is really important for that, right? A lot of space inside a site, particularly in meeting, can be controlled through that attic hatch. And you'll see teams try to go a more direct approach, but just pinging out this black eye camera, giving a lot of information. JJ not wanting to swing too aggressively. The table providing enough cover 
for aggro that you know doesn't want to risk it doesn't want to walk out and potentially get caught out by someone holding a longer angle that they maybe didn't expect but keeping players on the board all the same and nearly half the round gone they're starting to peel away at this floor and nitro cell sailing over the top of the attic wall ultimately not going to land on its target meeting that in exchange with a frag grenade maybe no assuming that it's probably ads's of which there are three and just choosing you know what We'll hold on to that for a little bit longer. Maybe we can get more guaranteed value out of it. Who's holding the flank though? Who's out the gunfight? That's a TCSG too. That was a one tap from JJ. Biblical shot there onto Wu's to shut down the Dokabi. Looking for another aggro evades the shots. He'll continue to man dining by his lonesome. The other three teammates tasked with playing upstairs. Candle R6 already moving through the breach. Ozone now trying to open up Attic with that secondary hard breach charge. It will, of course, be successful if there's no wall denial upstairs. Twizzler drops away. Not sure if Bry has, but JJ able to get another kill onto Aggro, the Nomad, inside of Dining. That re completely removes one of the pressure points for the attack, and they know these last three attackers are all upstairs, and they don't have to watch that area of the map anymore. And adjusting long lines of sight into this meeting wall between sites just so that they can watch this hatch drop so they can try and apply pressure because so far all these attackers so focused on getting this control upstairs haven't really dealt with anything down below jj on the top of white stairs waiting for someone to show their feet cryptics walking past but patience being employed by the cade who's now just going to open up the barricade just no make them know He's in this position. You have to deal with me. 18 seconds. Once again, on the clock. The Echo's still available. The Yokai's still up. They dropped the site into site. They dropped the Diffuser. Don going down, but Bry flanking into the side is able to get two from inside of security and Candle all alone in a one versus five upstairs above trying to find an exit kill at the end of the round. But ultimately, there was nothing they could do. They dropped in. The flanks were held. They hadn't cleared out space on the horizontal and they just ended up losing players to the angles. <laughs> AJ, with the shit talk in chat, calling them out for uh, for putting in a timeout request after only three rounds, but they are down three. They haven't won a single attack just yet. Couldn't even win the tertiary. And JJ went huge. I had those two kills on both players pushing dining, like his empire, then taking even longer to push that top floor. LSR all dropping away safely, not losing a single body on the upstairs extension. Meant that like his word, I mean, it was an impossible execute. They were all trying to push in from that hatch, the upstairs, the verticality, never doing anything, really. They didn't find a single kill. Hellasar were happy to just sit back and play the crossfires that like his empire were forced to drop into. So 3-0 yeah. for LSR, a perfect site rotation. And now we'll start over going back to dorms, though this was the closest round so far. It was, but... I mean, I wouldn't even say the round was necessarily that close, right? You're looking at it from Lycus Empire's perspective. They were in a three versus one, right? They were able to play very well around taking control, getting that attic, getting that armory in master bedroom. A little bit fortunate that the impact trick from, I want to say it was Riot on the Wamai, didn't quite connect the way you might have wanted to to deny that wall getting open, but they got that space. They got the pick on him as well. It was just from there. They were in the one versus three and they lost the clutch. If they can tidy that ending up, they should be able to take this round off of playing a very similar opener. It's, it is just finding these picks early on. And I think, I don't see a reason why they shouldn't be able to, but LSR at the same time have started to fight back a little bit more. We're seeing them get a little bit more aggressive and start to contest these earlier positions that like as Empire trying to take. You look at the last round, for example, right? You've got uh, JJ just taking that slightly more aggressive stance, holding the angle onto Shower Corridor to deny the horizontal space, to deny them access towards security, which in the end of the round really helped them out. I like Elisar. Uh, you've seen that Lycos Empire were pretty slow, swapping the operators too, taking a Frost and a Cap Can. Figuring that if they put the Cap Cans around sight, Lycos Empire are going to be forced to run into them. If they extend them across the map, then. It might take Lycus a bit longer to clear. Could get some free damage as well. Bry, though, speaking of free damage, is very lit up. And aggro on the cusp of an opening kill. The mute running back and forth. Bino feeling the pressure. He spots the player and wins the fight. Shotgun out to try and get a second. But Candle R6 not pushing him for the trade. So Bino and Bry, very lit up. But Lycus Empire, a man down. 
And again, they're just continuing to wait this clock out. Now you're bringing in the drones once again, trying to regain that information. You had a point where you could get that pinch going, but they didn't commit to it at the same time. And now these two low HP players drop back, going into the basement, rotating up on the other side of the map so that they can come back to either continue to play this harassment game on the lower stairs roam clear or fall back up the site if needed. But here's shots ricocheting, nothing landing on a target just yet, but now... Like Senpai, going underneath, starting to use these vertical holes against them, and they get the kill onto Riot. The cat can goes down, Microcell off the table. Those EDDs will still be available, but one less player to worry about. Above as Candle's able to find himself a second, closing out the mute who caused them so many problems early on into the rounds. Now they can start to put a little bit more pressure onto site. Right has rotated back, though. And that's a very important kill from Candle R6, because Bino is the only member who could still use his C4 as a... Uh... I don't know if you noticed, but Riot was actually running Impact. So Bino had the only C4 remaining, and now he's taken off the board. Bry is still 1 HP, and he's playing a prone angle onto the white stairs, which is where Cryptix is trying to come up. He'll destroy the Frost Mat. That'll reveal his intentions as JJ gets a frag on Woos outside that main window. Trap's still under it as well. Smoke comes out. Ozone could be an easy kill. Cryptix gets one. Bry instantly refrags. Candle R6 and Ozone separated. And even if Candle is able to come up white stairs, well, Ozone still has to deal with this frost mat. He'll jump on through, but he'll look down and shoot it. Candle R6 taking a lot of damage, but Ozone, the finisher, onto Bry. Plant now going down, but JJ gets the better of Candle R6. He looks the wrong way. All he's got to do is find this Twitch. Playing behind the bomb chassis. The Twitch has the advantage in terms of fire rate, though, with that F2. The 9mm, it hits like a truck. AJ still rotating around. He'll take more damage. Try and fake out the rotate and catches Ozone. JJ, what a play. Three kills on the round and outbraining the Twitch. Four in a row for LSR. I mean, it's just the constant rotations, right? Just continuing to use this rotation, just moving back and forth, forcing Twitch to keep on their toes. They couldn't figure out where they were coming from and eventually picks one route to commit to, and it just happens to be the wrong route. I mean, just being able to play that out again, like Senpai, in these positions where they can close out rounds, you have to commit to that plant in the two versus one, and Candle not quite having that location of JJ, just when he was a sitting duck, able to be picked up, and... LSR, continuing their so far flawless streak of Oregon, get to go back down to the basement. And, I mean, this is going to be a massive deal breaker for Lycus Empire in this round. They need to break the momentum that LSR are picking up, because if not, you're looking at 05. You move on to your defensive half. Yes, Oregon is a map where many teams will be a little bit more comfortable on the defense, but it shouldn't be this this one-sided it shouldn't be this steep especially as we're looking at two teams that up until this point have not lost a game in the qualifier they're both 4-0 this should in theory be a really tight affair and lsr are just walking over them you said it i thought this was going to be a really close game with how we saw Lycus playing on stream as well and lsr mm. are just rolling them we'll see if maybe this amaru is enough of a shake up to get them round win i think we just saw aggro Hook into T3 of tower. I saw a silhouette look like it was repelling really fast. And, uh, well, he's on a drone. Where is he? He is. I was right. So, early presence as he clicks a couple times with the LMG. Hopefully, that didn't reveal his position, but he is self droning. And they see it on the cams, too. And they're probably thinking to themselves, why would there be a drone here actively watching if someone's not using this as an entry point? So, that may have tipped LSR off. Well, it doesn't look like they're adjusting too much around it, right? Yes, you get that pillar controller pillar, but JJ playing on Freezer has the crossfire with the Jaeger, and so far, just shutting this push down from showers as well, they get that opening pick. And instantly jumping into the chat just to make sure that Lycus are aware of what's just happened to them as they start to fall back but still playing this cross right he's holding tight with the shotgun waiting for anyone who wants to walk down while having that hatch covered by Jaeger again just so that no one can drop and catch him unaware glad to see that nickname is still alive the deputy as JJ likes to call himself getting that opening kill on the cryptics it did look like cryptics was lagging I think I saw him like running in place so that might be how that kill went down, but still, it's a set of nades gone. Candle R6, though, gets one and two, pushing down Freezer. Almost a third, but gets away with just damage. 
Now Bry and JJ down, Freezer control nearly in the hands of this attack, as well as the man advantage now in their favor, but that is soon amended by the C4 from Riot. Ozone dead. All that hard breach, if there was any more that they wanted to open, well, they can't anymore. That could potentially be round, uh, round deciding. If they go for an elbow take and the defense is able to reinforce off that wall, they completely deny that crossfire. Hell, they could even reinforce Freezer if they want to. They have a shield playing it. Woo's, meantime, is going to be the player tasked with holding down Blue Bunker. And there it is. The reinforcement comes out for Twizzler, figuring, hey, this control is not going to matter nearly as much if we just reinforce off that wall. Candelar 6 goes for a solo play down main, but Twizzler wise to it. Dusts him, and now Aggro and Woos alone in a two versus three. One upstairs, one down. Woos since pushed into the building, spotted by the Valkyrie cam, though. So he's not going to have any element of surprise as Aggro probably heading down the tower stairs to join him. The two players consolidating. Swizzler, man holding a long angle. Riot with a slim angle into Pillar from that freezer doorway. And Aggro alone with the case now as Woos falls to the floor. He'll stun his way in and get killed instantly by Twizzler. I believe three kills for the Womai and five defenses in a row for LSR. It's a little bit dire. You've used that tactical timeout already from Lycus Empire and so far nothing to show for it. These attacks have kind of ended up crumbling the same way. You could even argue that their, their attack back onto the top floor was even worse than it was the first time around. That second defensive or the second attack onto the basement, again, just falling short on time you lose that habana you lose that threat of opening up this elbow and once they recognize that they reinforce it they start to play for these long angles and i'm really liking the way lsr are playing here right when they recognize they have control of the round when they recognize that in a neutral state they win the round they are more than happy to play back to wait for like this empire to give them an opportunity to jump on and they jump on them incredibly fast how many times now have we just seen a player from lsr patiently waiting they overstep a, a boundary Right, like Senpai, they, they make a mistake, they, they slip up, they give an inch to them, and they are very quick to capitalize, and every time they do, it's this cat and mouse game of just grab the kill, back up, don't overextend, don't get, they're very good at not getting overexcited in the moment, and just giving themselves up too easily or freely to their opponent, and because of that, you're starting to see these incremental advantages that they're building up, just start to stack and stack and stack, until it's just a point where, like us, are in these positions where they're forced through one funnel, Right, they're coming down the back staircase, and there's three people from three different angles, and it helps when you're confident enough to take one versus one gunfights and win them consistently. And now Thunderbird is coming out for JJ, too, to help support that top floor roam. He himself, though, down on the site, is along with that echo from Bino. Lycus, though, seem to be cooking something up. Sledge setting up on the barricade. The Nomad maybe just walking in? No. I think it may have been a fake. Well, I was getting excited for nothing. So the, they'll just end up air jamming off that main kitchen doorway while the rest of the top floor clear goes as planned, at least so far. The butt coming in from Armory. Candelar 6 working his way in from Master with the wall already open. They'll look to burn these ADSs and get rid of the shield and attic. Candelar 6, though, caught with the grenade launcher in hand. Sure, he gets the shield, but it costs him his life. And while they are able to get rid of that piece of utility, there's still players lurking around upstairs. JJ able to get the second one onto Woos. A little swing from Aggro. Can't quite land on his target in time. Bry, a little bit clumsy, but ultimately able to finish him off. The Nitro Cell, a little bit preemptive. Maybe expecting someone to be pushing down White Stairs. Wants to cover his tracks, but Riot still lurking above with a shotgun. A two versus five situation for Lycus Empire if they want to deny a flawless first half of Oregon. 6-0 is looking the most likely outcome at this point. The Lion, still two E1D charges in pocket, but hesitating to use them. Wants to try and find some value and ultimately won't be able to get any more of the round <laughs> as Riot swings for the first, takes down the Lion, finishes him off, and claims yet another kill in the half. And a flawless round to finish a flawless half. It is pure dominance from LSR. I mean, pretty much since round number one, right? They won that 1v3, 1v2 clutch. And since then, they've been in control of every single round. And they're going to be looking to keep that ball rolling, keep up the pace, bringing a blitz for Riot to attack downstairs. I mean, I don't know what you see in EU, but this screams elbow rush. 
Yeah, I think that's the universal war cry, right? You see that blitz, you see Oregon, you know exactly what's coming. And I like that they've committed to it early, right? It just it just goes to continue to further build up this narrative for me of JJ just being omniscient, right? He knows exactly what's gonna happen and he's just preparing for it. Blitz on a top floor attack. Maybe there's there's some edge case uses, right? If you're an avid Blitz fan, not that there are many of those going around, then you might make it work, but this is a bread and butter blitz play in the competitive scene. And, well, it looks like for the time being, they, they will probably have that mirror window looking with, straight at Bunker Doorway. Although, no, the second one's being put on Freezer. This just makes this even more appetizing for LSR to go for. And the Warden's off site. He'll shield still in pocket. Through, yeah, he'll default back through Freezer with the shield still in pocket. With the way the attack is set up, though, this is no rush. They've swapped off that blitz, unfortunately. I, just I was realized. getting too excited. Yeah, they I swapped even, off I the blitz. So. so it's nor it's a normal attack now, I guess. Normal, boring Oregon attack. They've got Twitch though. The premier Mira counter. We'll see if Riot can sneak his way in. He's just doing normal drone work for now. The only player even close to upstairs being Wooz, and this is what you play for. You play on these tower stairs, you nab a drone, wait for that camera to be shot, and then you start to fall back. But he's staying right within earshot, and they trade. Perfect headshot trade. Wooz for Bry. I mean, one for one, but Wooz's utility is already down. Bry, you're missing the clone. You're missing those nades. That's pretty good for the defense. Yeah, you'll certainly take that trade, especially with you know, the current performance of both of these players, right? Bry just been putting in a little bit more work for LSR. I mean, that's kind of generally across the board when you're 6-0 oh down, God, but GG. now starting to... a bit, Maybe a bit too soon, but you can certainly <laughs> understand the sentiment of just trying to funnel in that mental, psychological warfare, right? As they have this E-Box hatch open, able to send down another shock drone just to try and catch any pieces of this utility. Candle dropping on pillar... This is going to be a big signal for them to start dropping down Ebox Hatch. They have this control, but the swing coming in as two quick kills fall to the favor of Lycus Empire. But two more go Elisard's way, the last Cryptics. Oh no! Trying to get as much damage as possible, but he can't quite land the shots. I'm surprised the shotgun didn't find the final blow at such close range. But ultimately punished so swiftly by the Zofia for overpeaking to try and finish off the kill. And Elisar take a flawless map win, Crow. That's... I, that's crazy. JJ hops on the zo, the entry. He top frags the lobby. 10 and 3. This guy was 0 and 2 in the beginning of the game. And this guy is a, I would say, a career hard support IGL. But sometimes you can get frisky with it. He hops on the zo, gets, I think, three kills on the round. Really feels bad for Ozone at the end, too. That shotgun should have definitely killed yeah. at that range. Robbed and he got robbed because if he gets that kill on the first swing he doesn't re-swing and that becomes a yep. winnable 1v1 unfortunately couldn't land the shot the communication as well from the team must have been on point either that or jj just heard it and swung around but good timing there from the zoe to get that last kill and yeah what we thought was going to be one of the closest matches we've seen on stream ended up being uh the most dominant i think on both streams on both a and b so uh well, at least it was a quick Oregon, I guess. That is true. That is true. You get to see less Oregon is not not that that's a good thing, right? A banger Oregon game is still a banger Oregon game, but yeah, if, it, if it's this one sided, you'd rather just get it over with. Indeed. Oh, 7 0 for LSR. They will remain one of two, possibly two. One of possibly two undefeated teams. We'll have to see how Able Esports and Above the Law goes. Whether uh, Able Esports will stay undefeated. But congratulations to Lycus, or not to Lycus, well, congrats to Lycus for being the first 7 0 on stream, I guess. But congrats to LSR for getting that flawless victory. And I mean, the curse has to kick in at some point. Probably going to be in close calls with the way this is going. But JJ, this is your best showing yet. You're flawless. Don't get ahead of yourself because we still know what can happen. So until then, until our second game of the night, thank you very much, Ben. It's been a pleasure. Who knows what we'll see more of you, but our time during the first two days is done. So everyone, say bye to Ben. Give him love in the chat.
Bye. And we'll be right back with our second game as soon as all the other matches finish.